Yo, what's up everyone? Kevin here. In this video, I want to share with you guys my top 10 favorite resorts in North America. These resorts cover some of my favorite places for powder, for park, for the overall vibe of the mountain. And I wanted to share these with you guys so that if you're doing a trip, maybe you'll pick one of these on the list. So let's jump right into it. Number 10 on my list is Palisades in Tahoe, California. So this is actually the most recent resort I've discovered and it makes it into the top 10 because it has some of the most incredible alpine I've ever been to. So the alpine at Palisades, you have an awesome mix of shoots, of wide open bowls and tree runs. From the few powder days I've had there already, I've already had some of the most fun runs I've ever had. And I think it's because of the wide open trees and the flow of the mountain. When I'm snowboarding, I am really pay attention to how well the mountain flows and the flow at Palisades is one of my favorite for sure. Not only does it have great terrain, but the people at Palisades are also really friendly and every time I've ridden there, I've had amazing interactions with the locals and the staff. Number nine on my list is Elieska Resort in Alaska. So Elieska, definitely a resort off the beaten path, but one that's definitely worth the visit. So we visited Elieska last season, first time ever going to Alaska, and Elieska definitely lived up to the hype. The first thing that stood out is some of the incredible views you get up at Alieska. So enormous mountain peaks and in the distance you can actually see the ocean. So really special for the views. The other highlight of the resort is some of the black and double black diamond runs that you can access from the chairlifts. So for me, it's always fun to have a mix of terrain from easy to really difficult. So being able to access some really steep double black diamond terrain was really special. And Elieska actually has the longest and steepest shoe in all of North America. Elieska also gets some of the biggest snowfall numbers in all of North America. So if you're looking for a trip where you're likely gonna get some powder days, Elieska is a good bet. A cool thing you can also do just outside the resort is visit an animal sanctuary. Number eight on my list is Crystal Mountain in Washington. I visited Crystal Mountain for the very first time last season and the first thing I noticed is it has really incredible tree riding. For me, being able to access lots of different tree runs makes a resort feel really special, especially when the tree riding isn't too difficult and you can get really fun and flowy tree runs. That's one thing I always look for in a resort. Crystal also has some side country access where you can get to some really steep and fun shoots that take you back to the chairlift. So being able to access these steep kind of shoots all day long and ride powder is super fun and being able to get back to the chairlift to do it again and again is something that's very unique. The mountain itself has a very friendly vibe, lots of nice chalets and a place I'm really looking forward to getting back to. The number seven resort on my list is Stevens Pass, another place in Washington. My first time visiting Stevens Pass, I didn't quite know what to expect, but after a few days of riding, I discovered that there is a ton of different amazing tree riding there. So from the chairlift, you can access some of the best tree riding around, from really steep tree runs that are technical to more mellow tree runs where you're just flowing and cruising through the trees. It has a bit of everything. The thing I loved about Stevens Pass as well is that once you're on the mountain, you can definitely ride to lots of different chairs and each one is very accessible and the flow of the terrain is really good for snowboarders. So some areas are steep and others are more mellow, but there's not really any areas where it gets too flat and for snowboarders to get stuck. Overall, the flow of the mountain I just really loved because everywhere you go, you're discovering new places, new tree runs and new fun things to explore. But even better than the terrain at Stevens Pass is the staff. They were super friendly. I made three or four good friends that worked at the mountain. And I think of anywhere on this list, maybe Stevens Pass has the friendliest staff of them all. So shout out to the staff at Stevens Pass. Number six on the list is Revelstoke, BC, Canada. 
So I've been to Revelstoke a few times now and I keep going back because Revelstoke has some of the most advanced terrain and longest runs that I've ever done in my life. I think it has the most vertical from top to bottom in all of North America. So making for those long and challenging runs. And in Revelstoke, there is like so much to explore. The last time I visited Revelstoke, I definitely did some of the most challenging runs the trees in Revelstoke are steep and technical with lots of fun little rock drops mixed in. You can also access some of the best alpine riding in all of North America. And the alpine riding in Revelstoke is massive and super vast, so you'll never run out of terrain to explore. So for the size of Revelstoke and the access to trees and alpine, this is definitely one of the most difficult mountains in North America. If you're looking for a challenge, definitely check out Revelstoke, BC. Before we get into the top five, let me know down in the comments, guys, what are your favorite resorts? At number five on my list is Keystone Resort in Colorado. For me, Keystone is my favorite resort in Colorado because you got a good variety of everything. You've got some trees, groomer runs, and also a really excellent terrain park. The trees at Keystone can be super fun, especially on a powder day. They're not too challenging, so you can have some really fun, flowy tree runs through the powder. But what puts Keystone into my top five is the terrain park. So in my opinion, as far as parks go, Keystone has one of the best, especially for beginner and intermediate riders. The terrain park there has a great flow so that you can go from easy features and then progress up through to more intermediate and advanced. And the way that the park flows, and because it has a dedicated park chair, you can get lots of laps in. The people at Keystone also make a big difference. When the locals come up from the surrounding cities like Denver and Colorado Springs, you can meet lots of really just cool and down to earth fellow snowboarders. Number four on my list is Jackson Hole in Wyoming. So I got to visit Jackson Hole a few years ago during the King and Queens contest they hold there every year. And for Jackson Hole, I was expecting a big mountain and it definitely delivered. Of all these resorts, Jackson is one of the steepest and most challenging resorts on the list, but you do still get a good mix of terrain. And if you do get to go up to the Corbett's Coulard, it's one of the most special places, I think anywhere in North America. So a very challenging mountain with lots of steep trees, excellent like open bowl areas, and some short hikes too that can take you up to some untouched powder. The town of Jackson is also a really fun place to visit with great restaurants and just an overall really fun Western feel to it. Number three on my list is Mammoth Mountain in California. Mammoth breaks into the top three because in my opinion, a really well-rounded mountain. So you can have great powder days, it's got an awesome park, and just in general, an incredible vibe to it. So for me, I've definitely had some of my best powder days there, riding through trees, riding down steep double black diamond chutes. It's not too difficult or too big that you feel like you're getting into dangerous territory, but it's still challenging enough that you can ride with speed, have fun, and have that powder experience like just off of the chairlift. Mammoth also has some great terrain parks and groomer laps where you can work on your carves or just turns in general. And what makes Mammoth really over the top is the great vibe of the mountain. So the people that are coming to snowboard are there to have a good time and you definitely feel that as you ride. Number two on my list is Mount Baker in Washington. Mount Baker, I think, is definitely the most underrated and probably the biggest like hidden gem on this list. I've had some of my absolute best powder days riding here. Mount Baker gets some of the biggest snow dumps of anywhere in North America. And the terrain at Mount Baker is probably what puts it at number two. It has some of the best terrain to me in the world. Just an incredible flow to the mountain for snowboarding. You can ride the mountain at high speeds and there's just tons of natural gullies, natural half pipes, 
rolls and just everything that you want as a snowboarder. In my opinion, Mount Baker, just some of the best pow riding that's easily accessible off the chair. Mount Baker also has some of the best backcountry access. And for me getting into some of those areas, I've had definitely the best pow laps of my life. So for me, Mount Baker, a super special place. And I think one of the best places for snowboarding in the world. Number one, we're going back to my hometown of Whistler, BC, Canada. I have to put Whistler at number one because it is just the best place. You have alpine access by chairlift to some of the best alpine riding in the world. So steep shoots, cliff drops, rocks, double black diamonds, huge bowls. Between Whistler and Blackcomb, you have access to all that in the Alpine and more. For tree riding, you have the full gamut from steep trees all the way through to really mellow. And you could search through the trees for years and still find new places to go. And then for terrain parks, you have some of the best terrain park riding in the entire world. From access to the terrain park for very beginners all the way up to world-class athletes, you have something for everybody. And on top of having two world-class mountains, you also have an incredible village that you can ride right to at the end of the day. So Whistler Blackcomb, I think easily number one. Amazing, so let me know what you guys think of my top 10 list. Did I miss something? Did I get the order wrong? And it'd be great to hear from you guys too down in the comments, what are some of your favorite resorts? Thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing time this season snowboarding and I'll see you in the next video.